when you're coming into a, a, a room that already has DJ and another guy that's been here for a while, um, the odds of you getting on the field are probably not great. How do you approach your freshman year? Is it all about trying to learn as much as you can and soak it all up? Or are you in your mind saying, hey, man, I'm going to go win this job? Um, you know, definitely in my mind, I'm going to go out there and compete every day and give everyone a run for their money. Um, but, you know, like you said earlier, definitely I just want to, you know, be a sponge. Um, DJ's, you know, he's been everywhere and he's had a, a very long career. So, you know, just, just be a sponge around him and kind of soak everything up as well as Brock and the other quarterbacks. Just learning anything I can from them, learning the plays, learning how they do things. Um, so definitely becoming a sponge. But, you know, on that practice field and in the weight room, I'm coming to work every day and compete. Um, and that's really my goal. Ira? Can you describe what it was like putting on the uniform and going through some of those practices uh, down at the Orange Bowl? Oh, it was a dream come true. Um, you know, just to see um, and be a part of everything that the team was doing was, was awesome. Um, you know, something I've always dreamt of is, you know, going to an Orange Bowl or, you know, being in the playoffs somewhere, you know, being in one of those big, big games and um, to experience that um, as a high schooler um, was out of this world and, you know, it was kind of just, it was surreal, but I uh, definitely just soaked it up and uh, tried to make the best out of it. Chris? Two-parter for you, Luke. First, following up on the Orange Bowl experience, what was that like for you to get in and get a feel for how things operate on a daily basis? Um, yeah, it was it was awesome just just to see how they do practice and the speed of it and the tempo. And, um, you know, they threw me in there a couple of times, which I thought was really cool. Um, I was still dealing with, uh, with an ankle injury, so I wasn't completely 100%, but um, just to get in there and, and practice with the guys and get some of that time and down was was a good start. And to go back to the mega camp we got offered, what was that moment like for you as someone who's had to play a whole lot of high school quarterback for Coach Montgomery and everybody to take an attachment to you? Yes, sir. Well, um, they were my first offer. Um, so, you know, it was definitely surreal. Um, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but my dad will probably kill me. But, uh, you know, I remember him him tearing up a little bit as I got the <laughs> offer. Um, he's probably not going to be too happy I said that. But, um, just to be there with my family and for them to give me my first offer, um, it just it gave me a boost of confidence. Um, you know, there were a couple of times early on where I was like, I don't know, can I really do this? Can I be a college quarterback? And you know, for Coach Norvell and the staff to take a chance on me and give me an offer when I hadn't even played a snap at quarterback in the high school, um, it was it was really awesome, and I'm forever thankful to them. Brenda. As your profile grew, you became a more established quarterback at the prep level. It seemed like you took a more active role in recruiting for Florida State. I guess, why was being an ambassador for this class important to you? Um, you know, I just felt like as a quarterback of this class, you have to be the leader. Um, that's kind of what you're supposed to do. Um, and I felt like, you know, why not get dudes here that are going to make me look better, make my job easier. So um, I was all in on getting everybody here. Um, and just recruiting guys, I felt like that was kind of my job. And, um, you know, I feel like this class is an unbelievable group of dudes um, who, you know, want to go and work for things, not have it get into them. Um, that was one of the big things for this class. And I feel like that we've created this 24 class. Um, you know, they're, they're here to work, and uh, we have a great great bunch of dudes ready to work here. That's them. Oh, so two part question. Um, one is like, you know, late in the process, you um, posted that you're loyal to Florida, to Florida State. Seems like um, Georgia made a late run. You know, what was that like that saying no to a program like Georgia because you were so committed to Florida State? Um, it was kind of just a statement. Um, I just wanted everyone to know that, you know, I've been loyal to Florida State and I wasn't planning on doing anything else. Um, you know, there were some teams that came around towards the end of it, um, trying to see how I was, if I was shaky or not. But, you know, I knew in my heart I wanted to be a Nolan. So that's what that's what I wanted to do. So I just felt like making a statement and letting everyone know that you know I'm here to stay and I'm a no 100 percent. And the second part is um, you know Cam the other day said that you guys had a counter for, um, for who's going to have more recruits. What was the final count? Who won? Uh, I definitely think I won. <laughs> um, Cam, uh, he's my roommate. He's an awesome dude, awesome player, um, and he was also an awesome recruiter for this class. I think me and him were the two earliest commits, um, and so you know we felt like. Kind of, it was our, our duty to make this class what it was, and uh, you know, I feel like we both did a great job, but I think I definitely took over, and uh, I definitely think I, I won the game. Kurt? 
be, being committed for so long, I guess, what, what, how much of a relationship were you able to build with guys, quarterbacks already in the program, guys like Brock and Jordan, even before you got here? I guess, what was kind of their messaging before you even got here? Yeah, I mean, the guys in the quarterback room were unbelievable. Um, you know, even before I signed, um, just being committed here, um, you know, they were always super, super cool, um, bringing me into the locker room and, and being around the team. And, you know, outside of that, texting me, um, about my games, they'd, they'd look at my scores and see what my stats were, and they'd text me about it, which I thought was really, really cool. And it just speaks volumes about this quarterback group. Um, you know, Coach Tokarts wants us all to be a super tight knit group because, you know, the quarterbacks we lead the team, and if we're a tight knit group here, um, the whole team's going to be a tight knit group. So he preaches us, you know, being together and uh, supporting each other. So just to see them do that um, was really awesome. We've got one on Zoom here from Logan. Yes, sir. Hey, Luke, can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with Tony Tokars and maybe one of the reasons why you ended up sticking and going with Florida State and Fort Lee? Uh, yes, sir. Coach Tokars was, was probably the main reason why um, I chose Florida State. Um, him and his family have treated me and my family um, just like their own, um, you know, during the whole recruiting process and since I've been here. Um, you know, since I've been here, he's taken me out to eat. Um, I've hung out with his little new kid, Bo. Um, and uh, they've just been really, really cool to me and my family. So, you know, he's, he's a great dude. He's a family man. And uh, I felt like that was a big thing of why I stuck around with Coach Tokarts. I wanted to be around him. I felt like he was the type of dude that I want to model myself after. And I felt like he was a great role model. So uh, he's definitely one of the main reasons of why I stayed committed. Awesome. You mentioned how important it's for you know Mike Norvell to be one of the first um, you know coaches on you early in the process. Uh, how has your relationship grown since you committed, and now that you're on campus with um, Coach Norvell? Yeah, um, you know, every visit I took, which was a ton, um, we get uh, we build our relationship more and more, um, and you know I kind of just over the time realized that Coach Norvell is is an unbelievable person, um, and I kind of just realized. Coach Norvell, just like the whole entire staff, are family people. And uh, me and my family felt like that was a big thing. Um, and so, you know, just being able to be around him and see the type of man that he is, um, you know, it's been great. And I'm truly thankful to have him as a role model in my life. Howard? You know, when you were down there at the Orange Bowl, and I know just being around, you've got the, some mentorship probably from Jordan. Uh, and you mentioned the other guys. Um, getting to be in the a locker room and a, and a meeting room now with DJ for the next year, um, what do you think you'll be able to learn from him and, and have you already started that process at all? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'll be able to learn so much from DJ. Um, he's an unbelievable competitor um, and he's very, very smart um, on the board with the plays and the coverages and stuff like that. Um, the coaches actually put us um, by each other in the locker room, so my locker's right next to him. So, you know, I felt I was really happy that they did that. I feel like I can learn a lot from him and kind of just be a sponge to him um, because he has so much knowledge to give me. Um, but I'm definitely thankful to uh, be around DJ and just be able to learn from him. As one. The, the level of confidence you have, um, you know, when and where did the sort of drive, the desire to want to be a quarterback kind of develop in you? And, and what does it mean to you? It seems like it's much more than just actually playing the position. What does it mean to you to be a quarterback? Um, it means the world to me. Um, you know, to have people look up to you and, and kind of look for you on the next step is, is big. That's, I always wanted to be a leader. My parents always taught me to be a leader. Um, and I just felt like quarterback is, you know, you have to be the biggest leader on the field and off. Um, and all eyes are on you. So, you know, I grew up in a household where leadership was taught. Um, and so, you know, I just tried to be the best that I can. And uh, I tried to lead these, these guys and, and the other players around me to, uh, to success. Another one on Zoom from Logan. Luke, what's the game plan for you from Coach Storms this offseason? The Springer listed at 205. Any chance of adding on more size? Yes, sir, definitely. Um, you know, Coach Storms, uh, I'm going to be built by Coach Storms. That's what I plan on doing. Um, you know, they're looking to put on some weight on me. Um, you know, there's a lot of big dudes in college football, so taking hits from them, I can't be a little string neck. I got to put some weight on, so that's what we plan on doing, gaining some muscle, getting up to around 215 area, um, and that's the plan. Ira? At the, uh, the Elite 11, uh, I remember you know, the first day you felt like it wasn't what you wanted to do, um, but then you, you came back and had such a great performance. Is that, did you learn anything about yourself going through that? Did you prove anything? Uh, and just 
How valuable was that experience? Yes, sir. I mean, it was very, very valuable. Um, you know, um, my day two, uh, it wasn't the best day. Um, I struggled a little bit. Um, but, you know, it just built me um, and it showed me, you know, that you're going to face adversity sometimes, um, you know. And it also told me to kind of shut out social media. Um, Coach Stokart talks about it all the time as rat poison. Um, and, you know, the day two, I, was, I went back to the hotel and I was kind of just scrolling through social media because my phone was getting blown up. And, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of things out there that, you know, wasn't great. You know, it definitely didn't make me feel good about myself. Um, but, you know, I just, I had a great support staff. Um, Coach Tokarts and Coach Norvell both reached out every single day um, that I was there to check in on me and, and you know, just give me words of wisdom. Um, and I, I think that speaks volumes about this coaching staff as well as my support staff. And, um, you know, it definitely taught me a valuable lesson and uh, I'll definitely be able to use that going forward. Corey? It's kind of a weird question. I'm not trying to get you in trouble with your dad, uh, but why do you think he shed a tear when you got that offer? Um, I think he shed a tear because he knows that it was my dream. Um, you know, I, as long as I can remember, I was looked up to my dad. I wanted to be like him. Um, he played college football at the University of Massachusetts. Um, and so, you know, I felt me and my brother both wanted to, you know, kind of model ourselves after him. Um, and, you know, we put a lot of hard work in and, you know, countless hours driving down to Jacksonville, working out with Denny Thompson, um, you know, just, just hoping for anything. Um, and to finally see all those hours pay off and, and finally get that first offer, I think it was an emotional time for everybody. Chris? Can you talk about your relationship with Alex Ellis Omni and how much he played a role in your recruitment as you got to know everybody here? Yeah, definitely. Um, Alex is my guy. Um, he was uh, actually the, the quarterback assistant when I was getting recruited. Um, it's now Coach Tuck, who I love. Um, but Alex was kind of like a big brother. Um, I felt like you know, Coach Coach Stokarch was more of the dad figure, um, and, and Alex was more of like the, the big brother figure. Um, and you know, anything I needed, he was there for me. Um, you know, there were a couple of times where we played the video game outside of being here. Um, we'd get on the game, we'd play Fortnite and Call of Duty. Um, but he's just a great person, and um, you know, he was definitely a huge part in why I stayed committed here, and um, just treated me like family, and I love that about him. Awesome. Obviously, you mentioned you know the emotional when you got the first offer. You've been committed for a long time. What was it like to finally put pen to paper and sign on signing day with Florida State and just be done with the process? Um, it was a breath of fresh air. Uh, it was definitely a relief. Um, you know, I kind of just wanted it all to be done with. Um, I'm not the type that loves all the photo shoots and and, and all the attention and everything. Um, so for it to just be over and you know, me just focus on, you know, getting in that weight room and putting weight on and just going to work and it finally being true. Um, it was a breath of fresh air. Jordan? Lou, kind of adding on to that, can you talk about your decision to early in the role and if that was always in the cards? Um, you know, it, it, was, it was always in the cards. Um, if I was ever to be in that position, um, you know, it was definitely something that me and my parents had talked about. Um, it was something that I wanted to do. Um, I felt like, you know, why not go get, you know, go get a head start on everyone else? Why not get an extra couple months in the, in the weight room and, and kind of just be able to learn some more? So I felt like, you know, being able to early enroll was, was big for me. Um, you know, I'm still working in the weight room. I've already put on a little bit of weight. Um, and just to get a head start on learning the plays and, and everything has been huge. Logan on Zoom. Lou, can you describe to us the running back room, the wide receiver room, tight end room, we just talked with Landon Thomas, of course, but how exciting that is for you, just knowing how much talent you're going to be surrounded with getting the ball to him. Yeah, the, I mean, the talent is unreal. Um, all these guys here can can straight up play football, um, and they're going to make me look better. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm definitely blessed to, to have dudes like Cam Davis, um, you know, Landon, um, B.J. Gibson, Camden Fryer, just in my class. But the dudes outside of my class, I mean, Malik just came here. He's unbelievable. Wardell, um, you know, and then Jakai and, and, and Tron and Deuce and some of those dudes that are here. Um, it's definitely it's definitely going to be fun to be able to throw the ball to them and, and play with them. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to being able to work with them. Court? A couple of questions. First off, so what year were you when you got offered? Was it between your freshman and sophomore year, your sophomore and junior year? I'm pretty sure it was um, the summer of my freshman year. 
So before, but you had been in high school for a year? Yes, sir. But you hadn't played a varsity game yet? Correct. Well, I ran down kickoffs. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> That's a part of the game. Um, so what's it like, so you get offered and you haven't taken a snap in high school. You go back to your high school. You go back to your teammates. You have seniors on that team. You're a sophomore that just got offered by Florida State who hadn't played it, thrown it down, hadn't taken a snap yet. What's that dynamic like? How did they treat you? And how much confidence did that give you going in? You hadn't even, that's not normal, I don't think, for a school like Florida State to offer a kid that hadn't taken a college, uh, high school snap yet. Um, you know, everyone kind of treated me the same. Um, you know, I, I came in my freshman year and, you know, I, I played the role of being the, you know, the new guy, the, the low guy on the depth chart. Um, you know, I, I'd go to practice and I'd work very hard. Um, and, you know, I, I was quarterback running down kickoffs, just trying to do anything I could to get on the field. Um, one thing about me is, is I, I hate being on the sideline. Um, so whether I got to do, you know, safety, run down kicks or whatever, I just want to be on that field. And I think that everyone kind of saw that. Um, and that everyone knows how hard that I work. Um, and so, you know, everyone was kind of really, really cool to me about it. Um, you know, I, I came home and um, my friends had, had all gotten together and they, they came over and celebrated with me about getting my first offer. and. Um, I know that the coaching staff, you know, they didn't treat me different at all. Um, you know, I was still there to do my job and, and go play football. And, you know, they were just trying to make me into a better player. And that was kind of the main focus. Aslan? Guys who play the sport will tell us that there, there, there's no magic plays in the, in the playbook. There, there's only so many routes guys can run. So what's like the, what's the biggest difference, if you know, if you've been able to look between like what you would run in high school conceptually and, and what Coach Norvell wants to run offensively here? Yeah, everything. Um, <laughs> you know, Coach Norvell is uh, a mastermind, um, and uh, his offensive playbook is is awesome. Um, and so, just being able to get to be in the room and kind of learn some of the terminology and, and all the routes, um, you know, is definitely something that I'm looking forward to being able to do. Um, I've already started a little bit on it now, um, but you know, just the way that he schemes um, to get his playmakers the ball. Um, is something that I'm really looking forward to being a part of. We'll do a couple more. Sure. I know, uh, already seeing it a little bit, we talked to you, you had to keep the hair high and tight. High yes, how excited are you to grow it out a little? How long are you going to let it get? Oh, man, I'm so pumped. Um, <laughs> you know, one on the sides and two inches on the top with inspection every two weeks. Uh, it's very fun. I'm not a, I'm, I don't really enjoy my hair being short, so um, for it to be long like this, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy. But... Uh, it, it won't get much longer than this. Um, my mom actually called me the other day, and she was like, you need to get it cut pretty soon. <laughs> um, so I'll definitely go and get a haircut pretty soon, but uh, I don't think it'll ever be much longer than this. We'll go to Ira for the last one. And then just because you have so much football in your family, is football like the thing in your family in terms of sports, uh, totally, and then uh, Chiefs or Niners? Um, yeah, I would definitely say football is like the main thing in our family, um, you know. Um, heck, my sister even plays flag football, um, and she's a stud. Um, but, you know, it was kind of just – my parents wanted us to be active, um, you know, growing up, me and my siblings. Um, so, really, any sport that we could play, um, they wanted us playing. Um, and, you know, all of us just enjoyed it. I think my sister was playing volleyball, softball, soccer, you know, all sorts of sports. My brother was playing lacrosse, basketball, football. Um, so, really, they just wanted us doing something active. Um, but football kind of took over in the end, um, and you know that was kind of been the main thing. Um, and I think I got to go with the 49ers and my guy Brock Purdy. Um, you know I love his game. I, I think the story would be awesome if he were were to able to pull it off. Okay, thanks, Luke. Thank y'all. Y'all have a great day. Yeah, you too.